I'm sorry, I forgot a corollary, so uh, I'll have to add this in uh, this very short video. Okay, uh, let k, small k, be a function in L2 of sigma times omega, as we had it before, and let sigma and omega bound it. Then define the operator capital K from L2 of omega to L2 of sigma. In the usual way, KU of x is the integral over omega k of x and y, u of y dy, and we've already looked at this. Um, um, I say that k, the operator capital A, is compact. And that would mean that uh, all convolutions, all, um, uh, all operators of this type are actually compact. Okay, um, we start uh, by, ah, uh, yeah, right. Um, I leave the proof to you. Uh, actually, the proof is more or less on sheet three, exercise two. And what you're showing there is if small k is continuous, then the operator capital K is compact. And you do that by approximating K and uh, approximating the operator capital K and uh, with a, a sequence of compact operators and uh, well then that the limit is also compact. Okay, but uh, then still we have it only for continuous k. So why is that true for k in L2, for small k in L2? Well, uh, it's a prototype for the other solution as well. C0, the set of uh, distant functions, on uh, is dense in L2 on sigma times omega. So there exists a sequence kn, small kn, which is a subset of C0 of, uh, I should write it down, sigma times omega. Such that the norm of kn minus k goes to zero with respect to the L2 norm in sigma times omega. Okay, uh, so let's look at the norm of kn minus k. Take kn minus k times u squared. Now, uh, this is uh, the integral over sigma, integral over omega, kn of x and y. And capital Kn, of course, is the corresponding integral operator for small Kn. So this is Kn of x and y minus K of x and y um, u of y dy. I've just inserted the definitions of Kn and K, and uh, this is now squared. And this goes over dx. And let me add that, of course, this is the L2 of sigma norm, which we have over here. Okay, um, using Cauchy Schwarz, this is less or equal than the integral over sigma 
integral over omega. Um, this is kn of x and y minus k of x and y squared dy times the integral over omega u of y squared dy and everything is dx. And what I've done is I've applied Cauchy-Schwarz to this inner scalar product here, right? It's applied Cauchy-Schwarz to this. Now, uh, this one does not depend on, um, so, so this is where we can just uh, get down the u of y. And what we have is that this, this one does, uh, the second term does not depend on x. So we have size of sigma times the integral over omega u of y square dy times uh, the integral over sigma, integral over omega. Well, you see what, what's just coming up to kn of x and y minus k of x and y squared dy dx. Now, and uh, this is the same as size of sigma times the u norm, the norm, the L2 norm of u squared times the norm of k n minus k. And, uh, and this is, uh, I should, this is small k and these are small k's, right? k n minus k. And this is the L2 norm on sigma times omega. So finally, we have that, oops. Oops, I'm sorry. There we are. Norm of kn minus k the operators over the size of u is the same as size of sigma times the norm of kn minus k in L2 of sigma times omega. And this goes to zero independent of u. So that means that the norm of kn minus k tends to zero. And uh, since all the kn's were, um, were, were, um, were compact, we find that k is compact as well. Right, and uh, so uh, that's it. And I should add, of course, that this is a smaller or equal. And uh, so we have that the normal um, integral operator we're usually looking at is compact with respect to the L2 norm. Um, there's an easy, there's a quite a simple extension for this. So you can uh, also prove this for LP, but uh, since we are more or less be looking at L2 and Hilbert spaces, I think this is sufficient at this point.